Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Road to Overflow workshop series number three, uh, Access on Chain Randomness. Uh, but first up, I want to quickly give a heads up that we have our SWE Basecamp, our inaugural flagship uh, conference this year during Paris Blockchain Week in Paris, uh, April 10th and 11th. We also have our inaugural flagship hackathon, SWE Overflow, that will take place uh, starting April 21st and going on for about five to six weeks until uh, mid-June. I'm Harrison, I'm your DevRel hosting this workshop today with uh, our speaker that I'll introduce later. I'm based in Seoul, I organize mostly developer-oriented events. Quick fun fact about me, when I had more hair, people thought I looked like this guy, Glenn from The Walking Dead. Uh, and when I began losing some hair, people stopped mentioning that, but then recently Beef came out and they're like, hey, you look like Steven Young. Anyways, uh, over on to you guys who signed up for today. Uh, we have people joining us from, again, quite a, a wide variety of countries today. So uh, Taiwan, India, Cyprus, Nepal, China, Nigeria, Ukraine, Germany, US, and Portugal. Uh, and this was pretty expected. Uh, we have mostly technical, at least Web2 developers today because uh, this will be a more technical workshop. Uh, because you need to understand a little bit more about uh, cryptography and on-chain uh, randomness. So we've already had two workshops so far, uh, and you can check out check these out on our YouTube channel, SWE Network YouTube channel. It will be under the Road to SWE Overflow uh, playlist. And without further ado, I'm going to invite our speaker for today, George Digas who will go over access on chain randomness. George, welcome. Hello. Uh, Hello. And if you can share your screen, then I'll add, uh, we'll get started. Uh, yeah, I'm already sharing my screen. Ah. Sorry, I see it now. Okay. And I'll go off stage, over to you then. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is George Degas, and today we are going to talk about randomness of SWE. Many applications depend on randomness. For example, we can use randomness in order to randomly assign attributes when, you are, when we are making NFTs in, in gaming, in order to randomly generate elements in battle, loot boxes, and environments. Also, we can use randomness in gambling for for example, decentralized lotteries, casinos, and card games in order to ensure fair play the protocols. For, for example, electing rotating leaders or distribute stake yields randomly to, particip to participate to participate in a network. In marketing campaigns, for example, we can run lucky draws or fun reward programs when the winners are chosen randomly. And for the security processes, for example, randomly assign duties or resources in code, code justice. Historically, uh, high quality randomness requires either local uh, generation or reliance, which is resource intensive and potentially costly, or reliance to an external trusted source, which is inherently risky and challenging. Our goal was to develop a decentralized system for randomness that is both unpredictable and unbiased and eliminates the reliance on costly local generation or risky external sources. Uh, there are some solutions, but they have some trade-offs. For example, the commit reveal is biasable, the VDFSs are slow, and the VRFS require 100% liveness and they are also biasable. So the randomness of SWE is decentralized, it's simple, it's, but it's just a one-step API. No trust to external oracle is required. It's secure, and also it's light and fast. Now that, uh, let's go to see what are the functions that the API offers. We can generate random values. For example, we can generate the random unsigned U8, U16, U32, U64. 
we can also generate range base random values so where we provide the minimum the maximum value and then we get the value between data range you can also generate vectors of bytes by providing the number of bytes that we want to be generated and finally the api also offers the generation of boolean values how the how a developer can use the the randomness or chain it's pretty much how they can use randomness on any other language just in create a new random generation and as we can see in this example which basically generate a u8 uh, value in the range of one to six but there is but when we are dealing with the random or chain we, there are some things that we should take into account. We should define the functions as entry, private entry functions. Here, we didn't do that. We have one function, which is called, it's a public function. The user provides a guest at the coin. And if the guess is correct, then you get, you get back and guess correctly structured. Otherwise, it gets option one. An attacker can deploy the next function where basically calls the previous, the previous function and try to extract the value, the return result. Since uh, if the guess is, is it's not correct, this transaction will revert because the value is none. In order to fix this issue, we basically just change the, the function to private entry by replacing a public with entry. And now the, the function is safe. But there is another, another issue. Uh, SUI supports programmable transaction blocks. Similar to previous attack, an attacker can, can call the function, get the result, and pass the result to, as an input to another function to do pretty much the same, the same, try to extract the value. We automatically enforce program transaction block restrictions to prevent composition attacks at a program transaction level. And also, SUI rejects program transaction blocks that have commands that are not transfer object or match coin following the move call command that uses random as input. Random, random generator is secure as long as it's created by the the consuming module, in case it's passed by, as an argument, the caller might be able to, predi to predict the output of the random generator instance by decentralizing and passing the initial, the internal values. Move compiler prevents defining public function with random generator as arguments. The developer should also make sure that the unhappy path of the function does not charge more gas than the happy path. Let's take an example of this function. Here, uh, we, get, we get a random value. If that value is equal to one, then yeah, the, the caller wins something. This is, this is the happy path, it's cheap. Uh, so an attacker, what, what can do, can limit the amount of gas that is willing to pay for this transaction. And then if there's no gas, not enough gas uh, to go to the else statement, then the transaction is reverted. So they always, they, yeah, they can win and then does not pay any fee since the transaction is reverted. So in order to prevent limit-based attacks, uh, the random using function must not must not use more resources than the in their unhappy path than the happy path. So the cap, uh, the functions should be defined as entry, private entry functions. Prefer gener generating random is using function level random generator. And the developer should make sure that the unhappy path of the function does not charge more than the happy path. Let's let's go to implement. Let's go to share demo. How can we use it in practice? So.
So we are going to to create a new move codec. The idea is that we are going to implement the roll dice. So in order to create a new move code, the command is should move packet should move new, and then we specify the name the name of the packet. We create the new packet. This is our module. And yeah, we. we I just want to uh, uh, ask that if you can re uh, make your oh, yeah, text yeah, yeah, yeah. larger. So, yeah, so they were that. Thank you. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, as I said earlier, we are going to create a similar function, the roll dice function in practice. So, we defined one, we said that we, the function should be ended if they are using uh, the randomness. And the fun, we specify the name of the function, for example, roll dice. The function should take us as argument the random, the random object. And we are going to use uh, generate, uh, create a new generator, then get one value in the range one to, to six. Let generate, create a new variable, generator equal. The package, uh, the module is called random, and we are going to use uh, the function new generator. In fact, this function requires to pass the random object as parameter, and also the transaction codex, which I forgot to, to, to pass this argument. Now we have our generator, and then we are going to use this generator in order to generate to generate a range value and also to return back. Pass. This function requires to pass a mutable reference of the generator. And then we should also specify the range. In our case, we want a value between one and six. We store the, the result value. And then we return the result. This is a U8, so it's going to return a U8. Let's also import the um, the module that we're going to use. We, we want to use the random module. And then we need the random object, the self. And also here, we also need the, we don't have to import. Let's try to build our project. Oh, also one thing. Currently, uh, the other module is only available on DevNet. So here, on the Tom, on the move Tom, we should change DevNet. So we build our project. The command is to remove build. Okay, I have, I have a typo here. Context.
Okay. Here I'm using the move 2024 syntax, so I have to specify that it's a mutable variable. Good. Now our project builds properly. Now, on, on then as a next step, we basically want to get that value and then let's see how someone can meet an NFT. In order to do that, we are going to create a public structure which represents the NFT, the dice in our case, public structure dice. Uh, this one is going to have as a property the key and the store. Then we need the ID, which is going to be unique ID, and the value, which is which is going to store the result of the previous function, which is going to be a U8. Now let's create a new function, which is going to yeah. Let's create a new function with roll dice meet and meet NFTs, something like that. Um, Roll dice meet NFT. This one, pretty much as the previous one, requires to pass the random object and the transaction context. We're going to meet an NFT, dice NFT, and then transfer it to, to the user. So it does not return something, anything. Immediately transfer to the transaction code to the center of this transaction. So, since we already have this function, we can reuse it. So, let we create a variable named value. We call the, the, the function that we implemented earlier. And then we pass the parameters. And we create a, a dice NFT. So this one it has, a, it has an ID. So in order to create a, an ID, we we should use object new and then pass the codex, transaction codex, and then the value is the value that we. The, that we randomly generate from the old dice. We have the, now the NFT and we would like to transfer it to the user. In order to do that, we should use the transfer module, transfer, the function is called transfer, and then pass the object that we would like to transfer, in our case, dice, dice. And we should get the, the center of the transaction. In order to do that, we should use the transaction context. Call the function center. And then get this one that requires a transaction context from here. Here I have another typo. So. Let's try to build our project. Another typo. Sorry about that. Okay, good. Now the project uh, Bits. As an extra step, let's say that we want to emit an event also. Uh, the events have some specific properties. So let's create one event, a public struct, dice event, for example. Uh, all the events have, have to have the copy and the drop properties. Copy and drop. And we are going to emit the event is going to emit just the value. Uh, before we transfer it, we also need here an event. Transfer. 
going to use a web module, emit function, and then we create a new object. And we should also import it. Our project built, so we are ready to publish it on DevNet. I have created a publish script here, so basically publish everything in DevNet. Okay. Uh, this is this one. Since, since it is an enabled function, we can also call it from the Explorer. So, the transaction logs. This is the package that we published. So, yeah, we want to, to call the roll dice and mid and NFT and as argument. Let's say it requires the random, the random object. The, the address of the random object is 0x8. So we can unlock the wallet. We approve the transaction. Here we can see that we created a new object with a value four, and also an event is emitted was emitted with a with a value four. If we would like to do the same with the TypeScript, in this repository I have also TypeScript code. This one, this is how it should look like. Uh, yeah. The target that we pass the, the package ID, the module, the module, and the function that we want to call. In our case, it's called uh, roll dice with NFT. It does pretty much the same as the previous one. Mid NFT. Now we can see that we have two NFTs. Is the transaction and this is the object. Now let's go. In, uh, maybe are there any questions so far for this example? So far, so good. It doesn't seem like there are any questions. Okay, now okay. let's. We have one. Here we go. From Wayne, we have can this prevent dry run? Uh, what? How? Uh, what do? What do you mean prevent dry run? I mean, uh, Wayne, could you elaborate your question? So if if he refers to this one that I'm saying with a happy path, and there is no happy or unhappy path, it's just just uh, one one transaction in our case. Otherwise, yes, uh, we should be careful. As I mentioned earlier, uh, someone if they're a happy and unhappy path, someone can specify the amount of uh, gas that is willing to pay for this transaction, and then yeah, it will fail. Hope this. 
Okay, well, I hope that answers your question, Wayne. If no more questions, we will continue. Okay, now let's go to implement a, a raffle, a small, a small raffle. So the idea is there that we are going to, someone can, can create one game, specify the amount of shoe that someone should pay in order to play in the raffle. And I'd also specify the, the limit for how long the raffle is going to be open. And after that, um, what else? Uh, let me think. Yeah, and after they participate a uh, number of people, then we can close the raffle, we can randomly choose one winner, then transfer the funds to them. I'm going to delete what I already have. We're going to create a new project, new move project. So we move new small underscore raffle. This is this is our module. So we're going to create a game, public strikes, public strikes game. We should have a game. So to specify an ID, which is going to be a unique ID. As I said earlier, uh, we specify how how much shoe someone has to pay in order to participate. So we have it here. Uh, cost. Cost and shoe. Let's call it cost and shoe, which is U64. We also should store the number of participants. Like U32, the end time, which is the time stamp in millisecond. The balance, so someone, when someone pays to join, it's going to store the balance. And as I said, well, someone has to pay SUI, so the coin is SUI. And we are going also to have a participant's table, which which going to have the position and the address of the participant. The table, the position, U32, address. That's pretty much it. As I said also earlier, we should change DevNet, because currently it's there only. Changing that moved on to DevNet. And also, yeah, I'm using move edition 2024. I see here that I have also to put balance, let's add from balance. Use SUI balance. Okay. We should also import the table. I think that's it. Let's try to build our project. Okay, I should I forgot also to import SUI the coin. Okay, now we are going to implement a, a function where anyone can call it in order to create a new game, their own game. This is going to be a public fun. 
we're going to call it create. So, so in order for someone to create a game, he has to specify the end time, U64. The cost in SUI. I think that's it. All the others are going to be the init value and then a unique object, a unique ID. So let's create a game. Create a new ID. Okay, in order to create a new ID, we have to pass that as actual context. So we have also to import pass as a parameter here. Okay, then the cost we're going to use it as a parameter. The number of participants since we initiate here it's going to be with them. it's going to be zero. Then time it's yeah, what we get from the user. The balance is going to be zero. And we are going to initiate also the participant step. Uh, you and then we pass it as actual context. Let's try to build our project. Okay, we need also the self. For balance, we also need the self. I think that's it. Okay, create the game. And as a final step, we should transfer it uh, as a shared object. Transfer shared object. Here, this one was initial, use dot instead of comma. Good. Now, we have the function to create uh, the game. Now let's go to the next step, which is how someone can, can participate, can play in this game. For that, we need another function, public fun. We're going to call it play. So this function requires to pass the game as a parameter in order to specify in which game someone would like to participate. Uh, the fee, the coin, because in order to participate, someone has to pay. Coin, which type of coin? Coin, the Sui. And also the clock is required because we we have the end time. So we would like to check if the game is still available or if it has been completed. So we pass the, also the clock like this. And yeah, that's it, that's it for now. As I said, the first step is going to check if the game is still available. If it's not, it has not been completed. So in order to do that, we check the, the 
end time of the game to be greater than the current timestamp. In order to get the timestamp, we using the clock, the timestamp function, and we pass uh, the reference to the clock. And if not, we are going to throw uh, an error. In our case, let's say zero, an error code. So I have not bought the coin. Let's do that. Uh, use Coin. Coin. What else? We I also need the clock. Uh, use sui clock. Clock, but since also I'm using a module, I should also pass the self. Hidden, hidden issue. So it's type, type times double mess the function, the correct function. Uh, yep. The next step is to check if the coin has specified exactly the same the amount that we need for in order to participate. If not, we are going to throw another another code. So in order to check the value of the coin, we're going to use a coin value and we pass a reference to the coin that we received. And then we want to check it's, if it's equal to to the cost injury. Otherwise, we, we are going to throw an error. And yeah, it, if, yeah, if it will not fail here, then we are going to increase the number of participants. That's one. We're going to transfer the amount of the coin to the balance of the game. In the balance and then we add the value of the coin. And finally, we should also add the sender to the table with the participants. Passing the mutual reference to the table of the participants. That's the position, it's like this. And then we should get the, the others of the center. In order to do that, we should use the center function and pass the transaction context. We try to build a project. Okay, we have not. Okay, we have not. Don't have the transaction codex here. Should also both the center function. It's 
ਨਾਲ ਕੇ ਸਾਧ ਯੋ ਸੋ ਮੀ ਦਿਸ ਸੈਲਫ ਫਰਮ ਕੋਇਨ ਗੁੱਡ ਸੋ ਨਾਉ ਯਾ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਅ ਗੇਮ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਪਲੇ ਲੈਟਸ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਦ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਸਟੈਪ ਵਿਚ ਹਾਊ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਚੂਜ਼ ਦ ਕੁਈਨਰ ਐਂਡ ਆਲ ਦੋਮ ਵੀ ਚੂਜ਼ ਦ ਕੁਈਨਰ ਐਂਡ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਫਰ ਆਲ ਦ ਫੰਡਸ ਟੂ ਦਮ so we are going to use the random so the function is to be private and the function so it starts like this and the fun we are going to call, call it close which also close close the game delete everything and the close the game it does not return anything it, we have to pass the game like this we need also the random and the clock in order to check if the end time can be passed that's it for now and so as i said the first thing that we should do is to check if the end time has been passed in order to do that we use a game we get the end time and then we check if it's less or equal to the current time stamp not the time stamp we use the function time stamp ms per second and then we pass the clock and if not we are going to throw an error which error code 01 in our case to to the next code uh, yeah uh, we then we destructure the game object pretty much as we can do in typescript and game get all the properties the game we need the id don't need the cost in source so use underscore then we need the party we're going to use the participants the end time we don't need it actually here we need the balance and we need the participants table set this object that is equal to game so if the number of participants is equal to 1 then we don't we don't have to use the random generation we just pick the the only participant of the game if participants with one the let we define that the winner is in position one we get from the table the address of the winner this uh, equal equal the and then we pass the position the position and Bodo returns actually a reference and in our case we need the value so we have to add and start there create a new variable that works and then we get the balance from the coin so 
fridge uh, from balance the new coin from balance for the balance and for that one we also need the transaction codex which I'm using here I have also to pass it And then we transfer the reward to the winner, which is this one. Transfer public. Tra transfer as the world, and then the winner address. And we are going also to remove the winner from the table in order to delete it and also delete the shared object. In order to do that, we're going to call table, remove. We have to pass a mutable reference of the participants table. And the position we already know it, each one. And since it's a mutable reference, I have also to specify as a mute. Here for this is for move to edit to edit for, and then let's go also to implement if you know I'm participant and just want to delete the game. Else we destroy the balance. Destroys, uh, the function is called destroy underscore zero and we pass the balance. And what is pending is if we have more than one participant. Okay, then here we remove we remove the the only participant that we have, so we are going to destroy the table. We pass the participant table. And we are going to delete the game object. So if we have actually more than one participant, uh, we have to randomly pick one one winner and then the code is pretty much uh, as we have here. So basically we have to pick one, one winner. So I'm copy paste this one. It's not a good practice, but just for the demo. And we, we need a random generator. which requires the R, the random object, the transaction context. And we, number of participants, it's U32. So we, yeah, we need a range value between one and the number of participants in the range of U32. So in order to do that, we are going to call Random module then rate U32 in a range and the range is uh, we need the random, random generator and mutable reference to the generator and the range is from one to the number the total number of participants. And yeah, we have the position of the winner, we retrieve the winner, we get the reward, and then we transfer the reward. Okay. One thing that has to change, previously we had only one winner, so we knew in advance the position and we remove it. Currently we have to iterate through the 
the participants table and they remove all of them and then in order to be able to destroy the table. In order to do that, create a mute i value with a number of one. And then while uh, i is less than equal uh, to the number of the participants, going to increase the high. Then for each for each I we're going to delete the participant. Set of one in the I. So that's it. Let's try to build it. See if there are any issues. Okay, we need also to, to import the self from the table. Here it. Okay, here's the issue. I forgot. We need a semicolon at the end of an if else statement. This one requires a reference. Mm. Yeah. Okay, we need also to put the new generator, the random module. Use three. Self, the random new generator, and also the random object. Okay, so here we don't use the end time. I mistakenly deleted the underscore. So you're using the clock. So I forgot the parentheses. Okay, good. So yeah, uh, all the errors are fixed. So we're ready to publish, publish the module. Pretty much the same. I have a publish script, which publishes the codex to DevNet. Go to DevNet. So here is the publish of the codex. And I have some scripts in order to interact with the codex. So we basically call the three functions that we implemented, create, play, and close. Uh, okay. Firstly, we need to create a new game. Uh, we, in order to create a new game, as we said earlier, we should specify the cost in SUI, the end time, and the cost in SUI and the end time. In my script, I, I'm Passing, I just want for one minute, one minute game. Everyone that can join in one minute, and the cost is 0.1, which is this amount. So I'm calling this one. OK. 
Okay, we don't have any error, so we created our game. Let's go to see it on Explorer. This is the transaction that we called about eight seconds ago. This one created one shared object. This one, and then let's call the other function, which is the play. Here we need to specify to provide as a parameter the the game object, then the amount, which is similar to we, that we specified earlier, and then the clock. Let's call also this one. Let me see what we have done to the play function. Pause again. Okay, here, here's one error. Uh, basically, it has said that the value of the coin has to be equal than the amount that we specified in the cost ensuing. But that's an error, it has to be exactly the same with the amount that we specified. Let's republish the code really fast. So we have new code published. We're going to create a new game object calling the create function. Go, go to the explorer. Is the object that we created. We copy the address and then we pass it as a parameter to the play function. Then the coins here, then the clock. Let's go. Sorry about that. No, actually everything looks good. You don't understand what's going on here.
okay. We were able to participate. To be honest, I cheated a little bit. Uh, instead of debugging it, I reverted the, the changes. I have, I have the examples on GitHub, so in order to save some time, the working example. So we create a, we create a game. We participate in game. So the game was created 40, 50 seconds ago. So after one minute, we will be able to close it. If we try earlier, it will not work. It will fail because the, the game is still running. So in order to close it, I will use the TypeScript code. Uh, we have to, you, we have to, uh, in order to close it, uh, we have to pass the game, the random object and the clock. That's what I'm doing here. I'm passing the, the, the object ID, the random, and the clock. Uh, close. OK, now the game is, is closed. Probably uh, we'll see. It's closed. And yeah, that was pretty much it. I'm returning back to slides. So yeah, the two examples that we implemented, they are going to be on this uh, repository in GitHub. Actually, there are more examples uh, on this URL. And I would like to thank uh, Andrew and Ben for helping me with this presentation. The feedback was really helpful. And thank you all of you. All right, thank you so much, George. Uh, let's open up the floor for any Q&A questions. Um, earlier, we have a question from Wayne again um, regarding randomness, the dry run. And then, uh, so if I, dry, if I dry run the randomness transaction and send it immediately, will I get the same result? Um, ah, okay, now I see. Uh, good, good question. Uh, to, to be honest, I, I don't want to know the answer, but I think, no, you cannot cheat uh, like that. I will try to find the answer, but probably yeah, the team that implemented it took it into account also that one. But a really good question. And so then someone else also said, no, there will be a difference in timestamp. So Wayne responded with, so it's, so technically it's safe since we need to try underscore run and send within one millisecond. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Yeah. So yes. Okay. All right. Um, if there, do, do we have any more questions? If not, we shall go on going once, going twice. All right. So uh, that was uh, access on random uh, on chain randomness with George. Uh, coming up next is um, building a trading card DAP using Kiosk and Kiosk SDK with Alex. And this will be on April 17th. Uh, British or London time at noon. Uh, and again, we have the same. Uh, this, these are the GitHub repos that um, George has shared earlier. We've also included the, the shortened URL links below. So it's go.sweet.io randomness01 and then randomness02. And if you're still on this call, please uh, scan this QR code uh, where it's a quick feedback form so we know how we can improve for next time. So would really appreciate it if you can just use your phone and scan it, or if you're on your computer, you can type in that URL. It'll probably take you two minutes to fill out and we would really appreciate any uh, feedback. But yeah, while people are filling that out, I think it was really great that um, even though you know there were some uh, debugging going on, I think it's yeah. really 
great for people to see that uh, debugging live. I know it's not a fun experience for you, but yeah. I think it is a great experience for, for me. It would be much easier if I would be able to to see it. Currently, it was the 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 fonts were too big, so I was not able actually to to debug. That's <laughs> I said at one point it is, yeah, I just referred the changes and had the working example. Uh, right. Yeah, I was not able to debug. <laughs> yeah. The user interface isn't your usual, uh, your usual text size. That yeah. definitely. Yeah, goes. it's really good. Much. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna really quickly check uh, how many form responses that we've gotten. So if you're just tuning in, tuning in, we would really appreciate if you fill out this feedback form. Okay, and I'm gonna trust that you guys have scanned this QR code. And yeah, we again, I want to remind you all that next week, basically, exactly seven or eight days from today, we are starting our two day inaugural flagship conference, Sweet Base Camp in Paris. And this is the website. If you have not yet uh, checked it out yet, suite.io slash Basecamp. And our hackathon, which is the purpose of all our uh, all of these workshops that we are hosting is so that we prepare you for uh, the hackathon. Sweet.io slash overflow is where you can uh, pre-register. And if you need more uh, developer resources, you can go to our developer portal where you'll find lots of resources that we've accumulated over the year. And for example, dev tools and infrastructure. So if you need more, go over to suite.io slash developers. All right, that's all for today. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. And George, again, thank you so much for hosting this thank workshop. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye.